study relationships because all mine have failed, so I'm trying to learn. And I was reading about this one study done by a group of Harvard economists, and they determined the number one factor that determines whether or not a relationship will be successful. Anyone have any idea what it is? Of course not. <laughs> it's something called positive illusion. What that means is if you want your relationship to be successful, you have to view your significant other as better than that person actually is. <laughs> so a lot of times you hear people say, I don't know what she sees in him, or I don't know what he sees in her. They see some stuff that doesn't actually exist. <laughs> and that's why they're happy. We're learning, people. It's educational. Good times, everyone. Thank you, one person clapping, killing this. Here we go. Yes. Also saw this study, talked about the number one factor that shows whether or not your significant other will cheat on you. You know what that is? Attractiveness. The more attractive your partner is, the more likely that person will be to cheat on you. Isn't that messed up? That means if you want to be in a successful relationship with somebody that won't cheat on you, all you have to do is find an ugly person who you think is beautiful. Thank you, universe, for making it so easy. Well, man, actually, this trip, my, my last girlfriend, she, she was actually a radical feminist, which is interesting. I told my buddy I was dating a radical feminist. He's like, oh, that's great. Whenever you went out to eat, she must have always bought her own food. <laughs> no. <laughs> she was a radical feminist, and there is a difference between a feminist and a radical feminist. A feminist will buy her own dinner. A radical feminist will say that you owe her dinner because men make more money than women do. There's my gold digging girl, get it, get it, boo. There's actually one huge advantage of dating a radical feminist, though, and that is her expectations of me couldn't have been any lower. Because when I mess up, I'm like, well, I'm a dude, what you gonna do? You're not that great, you know it. Come on, thank you, one chick clapping, here we go. Killing this. I notice after you reach a certain age, people try to convince you you need to be in a relationship, right? And it's like, I've always been open to relationships, but the sales pitch for relationships is terrible. It's awful. Like, people would come up to me and be like, Justin, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna have fun forever? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, that's a plan. The implication there is that the start of the relationship is the end of fun. <laughs> this is what you get the most, though, when people try to convince you you need to be in a relationship, right? They'd be like, don't you wanna settle down? Aren't you ready to settle down? <laughs> no. Let's look at the phrase, settle down. The first word is settled. <laughs> Not only are we settling, we're settling down. Yeah, we're moving down. If I wanna settle, I wanna settle up. I don't wanna settle down. Now some of you are laughing, and some of you this joke is way too real. You get it, thank you, Sex in the City Provo Edition, I hear you. 